missing one thing. Sure, there. sure. So, okay, good. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you and I, I'm, I'm, I'm Sean Kalish, this is Daniel Chrisman. Daniel Chrisman is the uh, up-and-coming uh, presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party. You do do you have the not you do not have the nomination yet? Right? No, the, the convention is in May in but you're, Austin, Texas. That's the, the move, right? Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I mean, you and I you and I have been friends for a long time. We've been wanting to do uh, like a podcast discussion for at least two years. You know, on a on a on a, on a bunch of different you know topics. I don't know you know necessarily what we want to. Uh, get into if we want to talk about our uh, you know our past and our history I mean I guess uh, I'm running for president <laughs> <laughs> but I mean I, I, you know the reason why I'm interested in, in your campaign you were the one who got me into the libertarian party you were the one who convinced me to switch my my party affiliation from Democrat to to, to libertarian now I don't think um, I'm certainly not as active in the party as you are I'm not running for president <laughs> so um, I don't go to as many meetings as you do, but basically, I mean, my whole thing was I was just, I became disenchanted with the Democratic Party. It's not the party that I grew up with. It's not the party. I can't blame you. And I'm certainly not going to become a Republican for, you know, I'm not a Donald Trump supporter. So I guess the Libertarian, you know, the reason why, I don't know, I don't even know that much about the party, but it's just kind of limited government. But maybe you could talk about kind of what your platform is and why you're why you're running for president and um, what you think the, about the, the whole the, the process. Libert, the Libertarian Party is pretty it's a pretty interesting thing and, it, and uh, it's new on the forefront mm -hmm. and maybe in national that we had some candidates go for it and stuff like that but not really. Mm -hmm. But now that the party's growing, we're actually starting to get into urban centers. Mm -hmm. When you say the party's growing, I mean, what are you what are you basing those metrics on? Like, well, we had ten libertarians in New York State that were only registered as libertarians mm -hmm. that won on election day last week. That won. That won. That won their seats. We have a prosecutor uh, from Binghamton mm -hmm. or Monroe County or whatever, Broome County or whatever it is, won his seat. Okay, so um, that actually speaks to my ignorance about, about yeah, the, yeah, the party. Yeah. So we had 10, thing. and then we also have some interesting things. There was a lot, of, like over 100. I don't know if my numbers might be a little off. I'm, I'm aggravating. But it's about 100 uh, candidates that took cross-party endorsements and the Libertarian line. So there's about 110 in-office politicians that are under the Libertarian label one year after Larry Sharp has ballot access. So when I say that the party is growing, the party hasn't made its way into an urban center that's surrounded by progressives, mm. and it's at the forefront of, it's really cool to like say taxation is theft, mm. but if we go to New York City where people are dependent on the system, mm. you're going to get laughed at. You're like, oh, really? Taxation is theft. Yeah, you can't avoid theft and taxes. And we, we're, we're working on developing a message. Well, uh, right. So, so I guess that's kind of my, um, my problem with any sort of third party. Uh, it, it, it's like it almost comes off as, 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 as a radical agenda that's completely implausible. So it's like if, if it, 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 you say... And I'm, I'm not saying that this is the libertarian agenda, but it's like you want to, you know, end Fed. You want to stop taxation completely. You want to, um, you know, completely legalize all drugs across the board. You want to, you know, cut military spending by 75 percent. I mean, are, are the are are these policies realistic? Um, is it something that that, that uh, the policies are? Look, the policies are. We're we're, we're Americans, right? Mm -hmm. And if if we got our act together and got enough people in Congress, mm -hmm. they are realistic. Mm -hmm. Is it a realistic sell to the American people right now? Is it a realistic sell to the people all over urban centers right now that we're going to end the Fed and we're going to end taxation? And I don't think so. Well, you know, I brought that up just because that's something you and I have talked about in the past, but maybe you could like more clearly define like what would be not, not even necessarily the libertarian party line for 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 2020, but what 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 are the primary issues that you would want to campaign on? Uh, 
Well, really, the primary issues that I want to campaign on is so you know, there, if I if I were to stay local, mm -hmm. there's plenty of issues I want to campaign on. Mm -hmm. The first issue I want to campaign on is if you look at Flint, Michigan. Mm -hmm. Flint, Michigan sat there for two years waiting for FEMA to give them relief so they can get clean water. But yet, in Flint, Michigan, every single person was still getting up, going to work, and paying their taxes. Mm -hmm. Why was any money leaving the community of Flint, Michigan, where there was a crisis, mm -hmm. going process to the IRS, going in front of Congress, and then Congress and Obama deciding finally, after two years, they're gonna help address this issue? Mm -hmm. None of that money should have left that area until it was addressed, and maybe we could have gotten them more federal money for help. But that's the first thing. Like, New York City, last I looked, it was $300 billion a year to the Fed. Mm. Come on, guys. What do you mean, $300 billion a year to the federal government? To the federal government. Okay, okay. And then congressmen like Mitch McConnell or some uh, Mitt Romney, I guess he said it, but the people in Utah and all these other places whose lives have nothing to do with us send representatives to to Washington and then in Washington we have to get representatives from here like this quack Jerry Nadler we have here in this area and get them to agree on how these people in these communities are going to get their tax money back? Wait, I, I, I'm afraid, I don't really understand what you're saying. So you're saying that you would um, limit the extent to which the federal government could take ta taxes from um, yeah, I mean, look, uh, I mean, a lot of libertarians are going to be like, oh, screw the roads, you know, like, yeah, yeah, because the government's just so awful, right? And, and I, I can't blame taking an extreme position that anything status, we not want nothing to do with it, and I'll die just not supporting anything status. I get it. Mm -hmm. However, we got to, like, slowly chip away at the system, I think. Mm -hmm. And I also think that. It, when we're here in, in a, a city like this, none of the money, we have a federal highway system, mm -hmm. right? Maybe that needs some money. We have, you know, uh, a military, that, you know, that needs some money. But does it though? Like that's my, my problem. That's always been my problem with the, the Republican Party is that, you know, they, 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 they feel the need to, to maintain uh, American power and hegemony through a uh, strong military presence in, um, and controlling the petrodollar and having and and you know, what would what would the real consequences be? I wonder if we weren't involved in all of these foreign conflicts. You know, like they want to. I, I mean, I was I was always very critical of the Bush administration when they would be like, well, you know, Osama, uh, uh, weapons of mass destruction. And um, if we don't, you know, invade Iraq, there's going to be another 9/11, and you know, all of which were lies, right? All of which were just ridiculous lies. But at that, at the same time, I wonder um, if uh, there is a necessity to maintain, you know, some kind of uh, military presence, um, and or or military presence where? Uh, just in in the. A strong um, military yeah. presence in the in the, in the yeah military. that's what I'm saying or not well, well, what would happen oh, if, we, oh, if we that's if we, exactly what I'm trying to say mm -hmm. we do need some money for military mm -hmm. now do we need 700 billion dollars a year for military to uh, wage wars and have corruption all over the world and have secret genocides and all this stuff no mm -hmm. of course not that's ridiculous I mean right down there like. I don't know, man. I don't know. Are we even looking south? This is my first time. That is south. Yeah. That's. Oh, uh, the no. Excuse me. We're looking south. west. We're Tower looking Tower. west. I forgot which direction. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. You know, and you would say like we need a military, and we need military. You know, what about defending our homeland? But we have a cat on the thing. Come on, cat. Come on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And you're sitting there like, I wonder if the cat's going to knock the camera down. Well, you know, it's, <laughs> I mean, we're not exactly uh, <laughs> yeah, what set up like, uh, you know, we don't, so, have, we don't have the same budget. As so the, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna need a military. Yeah. A tiny one. But we're going to need a military. Now, would I like to see us bring back armories and, and like, have, like, legit, like, if we are under attack, which is probably not going to happen, we can defend ourselves and not spend trillions of dollars on killing 
millions of people since the 60s. Well, but, but it's just, it, it's the way the right implements this agenda of, you know, maintaining a large government, right? Whereas the left... Excuse me, the left, it, uh, they're... Listen, this is neocons and neoliberals. Right. They're well, that, both guilty. Right. No, 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 you're, you're, exactly. And the left is, is, you know, implementing their, their large government through, you know, other strategies and agendas, such as, like, a carbon tax, you know, like, not that I'm completely insensitive to... Um, uh, climate change. Well, what climate. is it? What, what exactly? I mean, so people hate Trump, right? Yes. And I, I, I'm in that. Class that, that that's fine. Uh, what do you think of him pulling out of the Paris Accords? Um, I don't. I think that that was a bad move. I think Why? That was a bad decision. Because, well, I, I, I mean, are the the Paris Accords are you know an international treaty where we're saying we're going to meet certain, you know, standards of climate, right? Have you yeah. read through the Paris no, Accords? not in detail. Okay. But, but well, there was, this would be my question. Are the consequences for failing to meet those standards, like government agencies that are going to, you know, tax corporations and whatnot, like, does it ultimately lead to more government control? Or well, that what, the, what the Paris Accords were, were they came up with... You know, environment. I'm an environmentalist. I installed geothermal systems. I, I, I don't, you know, I ride my bike. I'm an environmentalist, of course. However, the IMF, the International Monetary Fund, was behind the Paris Accords, and what they were putting forward was a carbon tax on shipping. So basically, the IMF was saying to protect the environment, they're holding the environment hostage for world control. And they are putting a carbon tax on international commerce. Mm -hmm. So if you brought cars and shipped cars from Germany to here, a bunch of BMWs, right? Mm -hmm. You would have to pay a carbon tax to this international private monetary fund, this banking system of criminals. Okay. And it was the IMF that were then going to be the ones charging tariffs. Mm -hmm. And they were going to be the new world order, so to say. You shouldn't say those things when you're running for president. But pulling out of that and getting rid of that major regulatory body was very important. And then people will go, ah, but you don't understand. We have 12 years left. The climate's in bad shape. And I agree that like we're so dependent on fossil fuels and it's all about lobbying. It's all about pension funds and their reliance. It's all about a lot of stuff. But what they're doing is Chuck Schumer just is presenting a law that by 2040 we all have to be on electric cars. Well, that's the kind of law I could I could I could get behind. Exactly, it's, it's a, it's a cute cute law. That's it's a that's law. a little more nuanced and complex than simply you know having a carbon. However, tax, right? however, when the government comes out with an you know, all-encompassing electric grid, right? right? Mm -hmm. Mm, it seems like you can't, like in New York City, you don't realize it because you're living in like a building complex, mm -hmm. but you cannot get your building heated unless you have permission from the Department of Buildings. Well, they, right, and I mean, is that, is that, are you saying that, is that a good thing or a bad thing? When you don't have your, when you don't have heat? <laughs> it's, 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 well, right. So, but, I mean, if they can say, if they can have these regulatory uh, things in place and say that you can't travel because you're not compliant with our new system. Mm -hmm. Now they're impeding on your right to travel. Mm -hmm. And now they have one central grid that you can't opt out of. And let's face it, a lot of this electric stuff, I mean, they just built a gas-powered electric power plant in upstate New York, and that's why Cuomo's assistant went to jail mm -hmm. for illegally passing this through. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of this environmental stuff is not about the environment, it's about a power grab. Mm -hmm. and, right. we need, and we right. need to realize that. Yeah. Well, I, I think I do realize that. Um, but what the solution looks like. So, so the, the question is, how do you, for, for not just for that issue, but for all of these critical issues, whether it's you know environmental policy or you know international policy, um, dealing with conflict with other nations. It's like so you don't want to have necessarily a large government that's taxing the crap out of everybody, calling the shots, controlling your lives, looking to that that body to resolve those issues because A, they don't resolve the issues, no. right? They don't actually make things better. Like they usually make things worse. They usually make things worse. And, and and B, in the process of making things worse, they take your money and they control 
uh, your lives, and, and it's uh, and so so that's essentially why I'm you know why I'm a libertarian because I want to see you know less government involvement in our lives. I want to see less uh, taxation. I, I I don't want to necessarily look to the government directly to solve these problems. However, I do want to see some kind of system in place that's facilitating the private sector to actually, you know, resolve these resolve these. You know, I got to, so there's a lot of things. I'm uh, what I'm going to have a hard time with with getting the libertarian nomination is there's a lot of things that I'm going to put forth that aren't very popular. In the Libertarian Party. In the Libertarian Party. Right. I was going to get to that. Like, like, one of the things that I would love to see, and excuse my French, but I would love to end this GMO, uh, you know, these are hormones, the way we treat the animals on the farms, the bullshit food we're eating, the corn syrup, all just all the disgustingness. I, I think it's so harmful to human health. And it, there's no reason for it. The pesticides... If something's not organic, I want to know what pesticides you sprayed on this stuff, bro. Okay. And uh, I want that on the ingredients list, too. Mm. Now, that's not going to be very popular with the, uh, the Libertarian Party. And there's something else that's not going to be very popular with the Libertarian Party. Mm. The federal government is going to need a minuscule amount of money. Mm. Now, property tax. Mm. Property tax is bullshit. Mm. You know why property tax is bullshit? Why is property tax bullshit? Say, for instance, they decide you're a criminal. Mm-hmm. You know, and you didn't do anything that bad. They just decide you're a criminal, right? Now they put you in jail. But you can't afford your property taxes anymore. They take the property. They right? take your property. Well, um, yeah, I mean, it, I, I, I supposedly own this co-op that we're living in. That, that this is a whole other discussion. Well, right, but what, what I'm saying is, do I really own it? No. If I stop, yeah, if I st- if I stop paying the maintenance, if I break certain rules, they'll you know they'll so kick you out. They'll kick and you out. And then if you own it, can you sell it? Not only can you not sell it, um, you can only sell it back to them, and then they could. Uh, the, the, that's that's one of the things that really I want to talk about. My housing policy is about. I don't know about buildings like this. Because have you been paying your own rent here? Of have course, you been paying yeah. your own fees and then that's it. So I pay the maintenance, but my, yeah. my, my, my point is that you know the ownership interest is like is is really limited. I mean my my understanding of ownership is if I buy a co-op, um, I own it. And you can sell it for to whoever for whatever and, amount you want, and they shouldn't be able to stop you. And, and 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 in terms of like, you know, why should I have to pay the government taxes on something that I I mean this is essentially I think what drove um, the American migration west, like during the gold rush and, and, and you know, during the kind of um, uh, early periods of American history, like right after the Civil War, it's like people got tired of dealing with all of these government regulations, all of these taxes, all of these rules. So well, they, they, wanted, they also just wanted to make a life for themselves. But, and how do you make but, a life for yourself? This, is, when, a, this yeah. is a really important topic for me yeah. because a lot of what I want to do is I do want to end HUD. Mm-hmm. And not and and then they go well. What would you like to do? Would you like? Uh, I think it's like H U B D or would you like Michelama? Is that what this is? This is no. It's similar to Michelama, but it's not. It's not Michelama. Yeah. And then they go. Oh, what about those programs? And those programs are great. Well, guess what? Like a, like somebody living in one of these programs, he doesn't really own it. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the times we're subsidizing these buildings to really rich people, like owners of sports teams and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then the people living it never even get a chance at owning it. And the taxpayers are sending the rent check straight to that guy. Mm. And then what will happen is they'll talk about Mitchell Lama or programs like that, low income, you know, to own. But they tell you that you own it. So you go, I got a view, an apartment in Manhattan. This thing should be worth like, what, $800,000? One bedroom uh, apartment, yeah, maybe would, more. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to sell it for you, that. Though. You would never be able to sell it for that. But if I was selling it for that, then the maintenance would go up to. Uh, uh, the maintenance would be the maintenance. It would be four times what I'm paying right now. If what? It was, if it was private like that, I, you know. But this no, is no, the maintenance would be the maintenance. This is the thing that I don't really. Um, so, without dwelling too much on. This situation. Well, this is like the cornerstone of my pre- running for president. We need eliminating property tax. Eliminating property tax because that's that's there's no private property. What about the income tax? 
This is where, so, remember when we went to go watch the McGregor fight? Yes. We went upstate a little bit? Yes. And that's where I grew up? Yes. So when I grew up, I went to high school, and it's right where two highways meet, 87 and 17 in New York. And there was an old ice house we used to have, like, cake parties at in high school, right? And there was this old dirt road. And they left, it was called Industrial Park Road, and they left it closed down, and it was right by this exit, and we had, like, a Woodbury Commons... And like, you know, we used to have drag races down the road and stuff, but like, what was this going to be developed as? And what they did was they put it at Walmart, they put it at Home Depot, they put in all this nonsense. And the thing was, oh, but we have a lease with them, the school is going to make a lot of money, and this is going to be great. Well, like, uh, you know, my ex, she was a, a, a manager at one of these stores uh, and she was making fourteen dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. So it's like, why do why didn't they why don't they make cigarettes illegal? I was wondering the same thing myself. Uh, uh, recently, I mean, I've been. But okay. No, no, no. It's no, a well, different. Well, uh, well, uh, no, it's uh, exactly it's exactly it. Well, I, I mean, as a libertarian, right? You know, when you talk about government, control, why don't they make cigarettes illegal? Because the, the the this country was built on tobacco, and the companies that have been profiting off of tobacco have such a powerful okay, political so there's lobby. There's lobbyists. Yeah, the, why else? Why I else? A, I think that that's how much the is prime. a pack of cigarettes in New York City? Like Fourteen dollars. Fourteen dollars. How much is a pack of cigarettes at the? Paul Mall factory or whatever. Oh, or you mean just in somewhere? somewhere like, else how much does it take cost to make a pack of cigarettes? It's what, three like, bucks, two bucks. It was even? three dollars up okay. until recently. They so they the tax. So, so they're yeah. making ten dollars a pack of cigarettes. The government. The government. Yes. yes. Why would they, they ever want to outlaw that? Well, I don't know. I mean, why is marijuana illegal then? Why? Why is heroin? Oh, illegal? because they get to fill in the the prisons, and when they get to fill in the prisons. The prison system gets seventy thousand dollars a year per inmate. That's a huge cash cow. They don't want to give up on that. Yeah, they don't want to. So that's that's the thing. So when I'm talking about Monroe, New York, and or towns all across the country that are getting blasted with these box stores, and the best thing you could do is become a manager and maybe make eighteen dollars an hour and get a bonus. Mm-hmm. America, our government, is not invested in you making money. Mm-hmm. There's really nothing in it for that. And then they have their property taxes, their tolls, their sales tax, their this, their that. Now, we do need some things. We can't just get rid of government. Mm-hmm. And this is not going to be popular with the Libertarian Party at all. And I understand how evil income tax is. Mm-hmm. That's the only tax I would allow. It, you, would, you, would, you would maintain the, uh, the... And property taxes, all the other sales is that, taxes. Is that the Libertarian Party line with the elimination of the federal income tax? Yeah. How is that? I don't see how that would be tenable or, or possible. I don't know. I don't see how you could sell that to the people. I, well, I... I, I mean, I see you could get a lot of people excited about yeah. it. Like, yeah, have taxes. Yeah. But I don't know how you could go into blue states... Well, the way the, the way the way that would work is if 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 government were reduced significantly, like if you reduce the size of the government by you know say fifty percent, then you could exactly. reduce taxes by about exactly. 50%. Imagine if we just had a ten percent flat income tax all across the board at the risk of starting a, a, a physical fight on on live TV. What do you think about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez? Do you have any respect for anything she says at all? You know, when she talks about like uh, the racism of FDR, um, and it's like, thank you. Mm-hmm. We live in a country that is undeniably one of the number one problems with America is systemic racism. Well, I oh, hold on, I, hold okay, on. all right. And she is the only politician I have seen to actually call out some of the architects of this system that is systemically racist. So can I sit there and totally hate on her? I think when she talks about those things and when she does go after banks, maybe people think she's naive or they think she's dumb. I mean, the Green New Deal, look, I just went through it and I just told you about the Paris Accords. It wasn't a good idea. She's making mistakes. However, 
I don't have AOC derision syndrome. No, I don't either, but she, the one thing that she said that I actually really liked, like the Green New Deal I thought was just a board, it's like, did you have professionals actually look at this? Like, did you have actual lawyers, you know, review uh, this document before you submitted it? But, but when she talks about, um, like, having a very high tax on the super, super rich, that's something I can get, like, not the, not people who have, you know, are making a million, two million dollars a year even, which is the one percent, but like the, the people who are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year, taxing them at, you know, let them, let them, well, here's the, here's, I, could, I could get behind them. Here's the trap we're falling into. So, you know, I'm a libertarian, and to, to be a libertarian and be against the Amazon deal, how does this make any sense? How are you against a business coming into New York City? How could you be against it? And the reason I'm against it is because I went to like a couple meetings and Amazon was big in Seattle, Washington. And they were telling us what they were doing working with Amazon in Seattle to make sure they weren't being bullied and Amazon was providing services to the mm-hmm. community. Mm-hmm. And Amazon was giving the city money for affordable housing. And then what AOC and the other Democrats in this city were pining for was they need to give us money for the subway. They need to pump money into the schools. Mm -hmm. They need to pay for affordable housing. Mm -hmm. So if you have these programs where we take billions of dollars from Amazon, Mm -hmm. and Amazon's paying for roads and affordable housing and schools, don't you think that the city and state government is going to be more interested in Amazon's success than not at that point? Well, I, I, I mean, okay, as a libertarian, right, I, I, I wouldn't want to interfere with the marketplace kind of sorting itself out, right? So if Amazon as a company wants to do business, right, and they're not um, outrageously breaking any serious laws, then they should be allowed to, to do that. Yeah, know? and I mean, I would complain, and I would say, oh, God, look at the direction. So the city's going in, now the Amazon's coming, but I mean, it, that, that would be life. Yeah. But when I see that they're putting out an agenda to have this major company fund these things, then I see the that corporation and the government start to get intertwined a little bit. And that's a very scary thing. Yeah, I mean that is a scary thing. I think I think we're past that now. Like the government and the corporations are pretty uh, so pretty severely intertwined, and that kind of speaks to um, this other notion that like yeah, you want to you don't want to have governments like in your in your business, but that doesn't mean that there can be like no laws at all, right? Like like I, am I a Second Amendment proponent? Sure, you know I think we all have a right to 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 to, to own guns, etc. Do I think um, there's some natural limitations on that? Yeah, like I don't think um, the Second Amendment applies to, to uh, as a right to like have a nuclear arsenal in my in my bedroom in my house. What you don't agree? You think as a private citizen should be able to own a, a thermonuclear warhead? I mean, this is an absolute like this is one of those crazy scenarios. Right. You know, this is like. You know, th- that's like that one extreme case, and then the gun argument just gets swept to the side. Right, right. Well, I'm just saying that there, obviously there has to be. There, there was there a laws, guy there are, there are in Colorado. I don't know if he was a meth head or whatever, uh-huh. but he robbed the local supermarket, uh-huh. right? And he had like his candy, and he's running down the street, and somebody called the cops. The cops were chasing him, and he dipped into somebody's house. Mm-hmm. The cops. The cops, I think it was, I forget the town in Colorado, it was in the Denver metro area, pulled up with an entire army-like division, a military-style division. Okay. And they blew this poor son's <laughs> house. This guy did nothing. He just had a house down the street, uh-huh. and some maniac ran into the house, and the SWAT team blew the windows out, came in with chainsaws, ripped all the walls off, and then didn't even bother replacing the house. You know, so it's like, how far, are, how big of a threat are they going to become? Uh, all right. I, I, and when they become a big threat, and then there's things in place that say, oh, you can't use weapons that can shoot from 800 yards out. Mm-hmm. That's cheated. Mm-hmm. If you look at Syria and Venezuela and these places, they came in with gun confiscations. And you know what? I mean, somebody gets the nuclear codes, 
We can take that to the Supreme Court. Oh, no, 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 we, we, can, we can handle that. Like, cross that bridge. Like, like you said, it's an, it's an extreme example, but I'm just saying that, that, that while I don't want the government to exercise an undue influence in, in, in our lives, I don't want law enforcement to be this, this um, constant presence that, that they come. That doesn't mean that I think there should be no laws at all. You know that it should be complete anarchy. That people, you know, obviously, you, like you were saying about um, GMOs, you know, that's a more realistic example. Like that's the kind of thing I think government should 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 be there to do, like to make sure that the food that we're eating is actually healthy, right? And that companies aren't you know putting it's poison in our food because it's because it's economically expedient for them to do. That becomes you know? a slippery slope. Because, like, we did have that woman in the subway arrested for selling, the, you know, the bread with the sugar on it. I don't know how you say it in Spanish. The churros, yeah. The churros. Which I was absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely. I've, I've eaten them before. You, did you die? From her. Did you die? No. I, when I see her, I buy them. Did you, you know? die? No, I didn't die. Did you get sick? I did not get did sick. Did you no. take a bigger poop that day, maybe? I mean, I've gotten... I, I, you can get sick, I suppose. Like, do I, if I thought... At some point, obviously, there has to be regulations, right? Like, restaurants have to meet certain standards and regulations. Oh, crap. If a restaurant doesn't meet certain standards and regulations, right. and people continue to get sick going to a restaurant, nobody's going to go. Right. They're going to go out of business. Right. All right? Instead, you got these letters, these A, B, C's, and D's, and then they have this Department of Health running around finding these restaurants for the dumbest things over and over and putting people out of business. And then the extreme situations when people really do get sick, those regulations don't stop that from actually happening. Like there was a there was a restaurant at Chelsea Piers, it was actually one of my favorite seafood restaurants. I used to go there every time I would visit my mother. And and um all these people got this like flesh eating bacteria, you know. So they they traced it back to, to to the Chelsea Crab House, I think it was called. They closed it down immediately. You know that was it, right? They never sold anything again after that. But that happens. Regard like the the the, the laws that were in place didn't didn't ensure that 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 wasn't going to happen, right? Exactly. I mean, but I I'm, I I think. Are you saying though that that restaurants shouldn't have to meet certain health code criteria, or that you don't want a Department of Health? Or I mean, what are what are they like? Is it GAT ratings or something like that? Well, the Zagat ratings isn't Department of Health. That's about um, like you know one star, two star. Uh, is it a good restaurant? Or not? Yeah, like that. Do you think one of these restaurants where you get any bullseye walking out of it after you're eating are going to get a good Zagat rating? No, but did, do you, do I think that the government should be able to shut them down because someone got a you know Ebola from from eating there? I mean, probably, right? I mean, it should be if. If somebody goes to a restaurant and eats at the restaurant in good faith, mm-hmm. and now they're in a life-threatening situation, we need to investigate if that was a violation of the map or not. Well, here's here's where I have a problem, right? It's not so much with the food situation. There was a, a post on uh, that was making the rounds on Facebook where this artist in Washington Square Park was selling his art, right, mm-hmm. in the park, mm-hmm. and. You're kind of not necessarily supposed to do that, but it's it's sort of a gray area. Like in other words, the cops can shut you down if they want to. Typically, they don't want to, but they kind of told this guy like, "Listen, you got to pack up your stuff and go away." And he's like, "Whatever, I'm not." Well, they were bored. They felt like being a bully. They, Maybe so, if he fought back, they'd take him to Central Booking. And that's exactly what that's exactly what, that's exactly what happened. So he resisted, and they just beat him like you know they beat him without mercy. Okay. They Oh, yeah. them down with Mace. So, so because they had no choice, the cops had no. You don't know what it's like to be a cop, Sean. Well, they had no choice. I'm just saying that. Why can't this guy sell his art on the street without having to deal with a hundred different regulations? And so, he doesn't so, have a license. But why does he have to have a license exactly. to sell that's art? That's what like, I'm trying to tell you. Yeah. That's that's the so problem. so when you talk about like the license and the the Department of Health. Or food vendors, or anything like that. If I walked into your kitchen and ate something out of your kitchen, you don't have a license, right? Right. Would I die? You might, if I, it was like, uh, like uh, seriously. I mean, how? Well, how many deaths are we dealing with every year from seriously. you know food being consumed by someone who doesn't have a license, provided by someone now, who doesn't have a license? Now, here's where I go crazy. Mm-hmm. My sister just had a blood disease. Uh-huh. My dad has a blood disease. My best friend's dad. 
just got half his pancreas, half his stomach ripped out mm. my, from non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. My aunt has non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. My wrestling coach going up has a blood disease. And these glycophates uh-huh. that are in the pesticides and in the GMOs are causing this. Mm-hmm. There are lawsuits going on left and right about glycophates causing non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is one of the ugliest cancers you could possibly get. Now, this is a clear violation of the NAP. And the reason why we can't look into what's going on is that these pharmaceutical companies that own Monsanto are the same pharmaceutical companies that ran experiments in Nazi Germany have proprietary information. They, they are, have patents on their stuff and they're not, we're not allowed to see how our food is genetically modified to see what's going on. I guess you could reverse engineer it in a lab somehow or all that stuff. But people are dying. Well, you're right. I mean, and this speak like the issues that they should take an interest, that the government should take an interest in regulating, that would actually make a healthier society, that would benefit a large amount of people. They're not doing. No. And then, and then the regulations that are not injuring. You know, the the the, the, the woman selling churros in the street. Is it theoretically possible that a bad churro might make someone sick? Sure, it could happen. But is that really a problem that we're dealing with? No. Whereas. You know, um, we have rampant obesity and all kinds of uh, health problems that being, are being exacerbated by GMOs. Um, you mentioned cigarettes, like marijuana. Well, now the trend is towards the criminalization of marijuana, but for the longest time. But, I mean, it's still not even done yet. I mean, no. it's like 20 years that people have been kind of going to stores already and buying weed, and it's still not done yet. No, and like you said, because it satisfies, the, uh, there's an economic incentive. There's an industrial complex, right? And all, like even with cigarettes. Yeah. So I talked about the syntax, all right? And you talked about the lobby. No one talks about how much money the doctors make off of Medicare and Medicaid. Mm-hmm. Do you think those doctors that get that automatic check to their office really want to see cigarettes go away? Uh, yeah, actually, I do. I, I, I think so. that, I think that um, I, well, I don't really understand how health insurance premiums work, but I mean, cigarettes are just so bad that I think ultimately it's raising health care costs and it's hard, it's becoming harder and harder for um, a lot of those channels to make the same kind of profit that they would they would want to, right? So, but I at the same think, time, yeah. in New York City, they're trying to implement a license to ride a bicycle uh, for safety. Right. Should you have to get a license to smoke a cigarette? Right. No, that, that's that's a good question. Obviously, I, I mean, you have to be a certain age to smoke a cigarette, right? Um, there's certain criteria that you have to meet to be able to. Um, to do things safely, right? But but the licensing and the regulatory requirements. I mean, I, 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 there are circumstances where that is absolutely necessary. Like I don't want a doctor performing brain surgery who hasn't gone through some sort of rigorous board certification process, right? Yeah. Would you? You don't agree with that? I ha- I actually had a cranial operation. From right. someone who was board certified, I'm assuming. And uh, actually, our mutual friend gave me a recommendation to him. Uh, Bopana, you're talking yes. about Bopana? Yes. And this guy was a boss. He wow. was a legend. I mean, he's one of the finest doctors in the world. Yeah. But when I I reached out to him to get recommendations because mm-hmm. they were opening my brain, my, my head up. Yes, yes. I researched every single doctor. Mm-hmm. I went down rabbit holes researching every single doctor's life <laughs> as much as I can. I wasn't messing around with this. Yeah. So, I mean, a lot of the times, you have these doctors that are complete quacks that pass these regulations, that meet these standards. They're absolute morons, and we're going in there ignorant, like, well, I mean, he passes USMLE exam, and he's a doctor, so he must know what he's talking about. It's a scary thought. You really don't know. Like yeah. there are no guarantees yeah. in life. Like you could have every, you know, compliance. Joseph Mengele, the Nazi, was a was a was a doctor. He was, you know. So, I mean, there's. I still stand by what I said, though. 
<clears throat> like when it comes to the practice of medicine, I want to you know know that when I see a doctor, they've gone through a basic process, they've gone through medical school, they, they you obviously have to earn that title doctor, and you have to earn that title doctor. Yeah. So I'm going to take what they say seriously um, because you know I'm dealing with questions about about health, um, but. When you know, if some woman is selling a churro on the street, I don't think you know she should have to meet some sort of regulatory requirement. To exactly. Be that, you know? Exactly. And um, you know, the less and the last thing they should do is send armed cops who don't speak any Spanish up to her, and if she doesn't understand what they're saying. Then just get out of control and cuff her and stuff her and like it's ridiculous. Yeah, and and I mean at the end of the day, um, you're seeing that power just kind of expand more and more, right? And like uh, Jordan Peterson, who I really enjoy listening to, talks about Alexander Solzhenitsyn's book, uh, The Gulag Archipelago. I want to his camera. What's that? Fair, fair enough. I mean, I was projecting yeah. towards you, but the, the Gulag Archipelago, you know, like what 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 happened in, in communist Russia when the government just kind of had unlimited power to do whatever they wanted to do. It was just a total, a total nightmare, you know. And um, I feel like what's happening politically is the two-party system is giving us a choice between communist Russia on the left and Nazi Germany on the right, you know. Well, in New York... The duopoly is giving us a choice between Andrew Cuomo, who's a flat-out fascist. Mm -hmm. He's a flat-out fascist. Mm -hmm. Mark Molinaro. Mm -hmm. I mean, be, and, and 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 don't get me wrong. I'm not a Democrat, but there are plenty, plenty of Democrats in this state that would be much better for the state than Andrew Cuomo. Mm -hmm. But that's like like what you were saying about the regulatory requirements not necessarily doing what they're designed to do. I feel like the political process is not bringing forth the most um, qualified candidates, the candidates who are inclined to do the best good for the most amount of people. It's it's really bringing out like the most aggressive, the most psychotic, the most pathological uh, people who just know how to manipulate the system and know how to say whatever they need to say in order to get the votes, right? Oh, you know what gets me more than anything is, and, and really what got me politically triggered more than anything is anytime I deal with a bureaucratic agency, if you get into the DMV, if you get into, I don't know, the Department of Education, if you get into one of these cushy pension jobs, right, it's pretty hard to lose. Yeah. It's like really, really hard to lose these jobs, right? Well, that's good, I think. Uh, it is. Yeah. And that's why it happened. Everyone wanted to be safe and protect these people and protect workers and protect the jobs, I've right? Never, I've never had a position right. like that. I've always... I've do you always know what class of people... Do you know what group of people I've met that are so scared of getting in trouble at their job more than any other? Yeah. Teachers. Yeah. And they have a tenure. Yeah. And they're petrified of losing their... Even cops. The, 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 the guy stood over Eric Gardner and watched him die and was still on the force for four years. It's really hard to lose your job. Why then are these bureaucrats, when they meet a human being, so hard to communicate with because they're so scared of getting in trouble? Yeah, I, I, I mean, we... we they're not putting the human being in front of them first. They're putting their pension first. Mm -hmm. um, it's a real problem. Yeah, and I, there's certain types of positions where you're dealing with public trust, where the standard of behavior has become one of like, well, if you say anything that might be interpreted as insensitive, then you'll lose your tenure as a teacher, or you'll be suspended as a cop, or um, so. I, 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 I mean, I, I see where that's coming from, but obviously I'm not on 
board with that. You know, that's really a function of like the, the, the social justice warrior left, I think. We would agree on that, right? What, the, uh, the bureaucrats putting their system and their job before the human being that's standing in front of them? Well, the, why they've been boxed into a corner where they feel that they can't put the human being first. You know, that they... Yeah, you know. I, I mean, a lot of the times with these, these state jobs or whatever, they pay decent, mm -hmm. but everyone's in it for that pension. Mm -hmm. They do not want to get themselves in trouble. And they're they're always willing to side with the state. Like you're a lawyer, like in the early two thousands, all across uh, New York State, they were having a real problem with serving papers. They were like basically, you know, find an address, crumple it up, and throw them in his yard, and he served. Mm -hmm. And if you go to appeal these things. And it's clear that, like, you didn't get served with papers. The judges look at this and go, yeah, they look for any technicality to keep that case going. Mm -hmm. Because they're going to get a pension from the state. So when a judge looks at this, no matter what, he's always going to put his pension before the human being. Well, I think we've, we've talked a lot about... Um you know, policy considerations and, um, you know, political philosophy generally. Talk to me a little bit, like you said, you don't have the nomination as of right now. What are the, what are the next steps in the, in the campaign strategy? What's the timeline? What do you need to do in order to get on the ballot? And, and 2020, I mean, I think it's obvious 2020 is the, the election you're going for, right? It's not going to be 2024. You're thinking about the next presidential well, election. Or maybe <laughs> I'm, I'm, if 2024 is a possibility as well. All right. Okay. Fair enough. But when is 2020 a possibility? Well, so here's what I need to do. I need to, uh, New York yesterday just voted for a primary. Mm -hmm. So the 13,000 registered libertarians in New York, I have to get about 600 signatures. Mm -hmm. uh, and do you or, think you can do that? Do I think it's worth it to do it is the question because from that time, from December to mid-February, is when I have to get those signatures and find 13,000 people in New York State, which is a needle in a haystack. It's not like I need 600 signatures. To I need 600 libertarians. Yeah. Or I need media. If I have media, New York will let me on the ballot. What do you mean if you have? What That's is, the rule. What, what's the fun? What is? What you either got to you got to either make it through the New York primary, uh -huh. or you have to show that you're like a legit candidate with media. What's and then they'll let you on the ballot. Well, what is that? How do they I don't know. I mean, like, is this like, media? <laughs> well, sure, this is, is this media. media? But, but it, well, what is thir like 1,300? You said 1,300 signatures. I have 600 signatures out of the 13,000 registered libertarians in New York okay, State. Okay, but a signature is a quantifiable thing, right? You have 600 signatures. You can get one, two, three, four, 600. You have, like, so that's a quantifiable thing. What does it mean to have a media presence exactly? That's a, the rules around the whole election process. I find really like, is somebody at the board of election elections going to say, "Oh, Fox News, that's not real media." Well, I yeah. my, when you were you in the past, you were thinking about running for uh, public advocate, and again, you needed to meet like a certain amount of um, signature requirements, and I I think that that requirement in and of itself um, kind of make sure that only candidates who have enough money to hire a campaign staff to canvas on the streets to collect those signatures are able to get on the ballot. Like, like there's a number of 100,000 other ways you could get those signatures electronically. And they say they want to pre uh, prevent voter fraud, but I don't, I don't buy that. Like, well, like uh, why can't you create a website and have people sign have, like offer a virtual signature. I'll tell you what. Electronic signature. I'll tell you what. Here's the value. Mm -hmm. New York is doing good, but it's in a little trouble with LP. But here's the value of them saying no. Presidential primaries in order the candidates in order to get on our ballot either need to be a formidable candidate with a substantial amount of media, or they need to get uh, five percent of the libertarians in the state uh -huh. to wet sign a paper and say we endorse him. Right. That allows you to build your infrastructure. Because how many libertarians do I know? Maybe four or five hundred. 
I don't know all 13,000, that's for sure. And now I have to find them. And the state also has to find them. There's 13,000 in the state or in the city? In the state. That's a small number if you really think about how many yeah, registered like how many scary. registered Democrats are there in the state? How many registered Republicans? Uh, millions, right? Millions. 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 Like like it's really a, a tiny um, you know, a tiny party at this point. But here's the real thing. Yeah. So even when they have a primary, the primary is gonna be a joke because the delegates aren't bound to who won the primary. Mm-hmm. So if like Gary Johnson jumped back in the race they, even though, you know, Bob Sanders won, mm-hmm. they can still go there and vote for Gary Johnson. So the name of the game here is you need 100 delegates mm-hmm. to get on the debate stage in Austin in May. And that's just for the national that's uh, get libertarian on, party. That's to get on the national debate stage. For the libertarian yeah. the debate stage. And if you win that debate, mm-hmm. you become the libertarian nominee. Okay, so that's your strategy. So yeah, outline that again for me. The, the highlights you need to. I need a hundred delegates. You need a hundred delegates. Before you get a hundred delegates, you need how many signatures? That's the thing. They're not bound delegates. So you can get the delegates without the signatures, right? Yeah. Okay. So the thing is, is if New York and the people in New York want to actually get out of their comfort zone and build their infrastructure and go find people in their state mm-hmm. and meet them and have them sign signatures for me, mm-hmm. and we could do that. But at the same time, if they're not even willing to leave their house, I'm getting media all the time. Yeah. So well, I can get on the ballot. Yeah, I, I mean, as far as getting signatures are concerned, like, like I was saying, they, what the Democrats and the Republicans do is they hire a team of people to go to the Staten Island Ferry with the, the we're trying to get so and so on the ballot. Will you sign this, please? Yeah, but those are like open elections where anyone can sign. I have to literally find out of the thirteen thousand mm-hmm. people, six hundred of them, and they have to be registered with. And the they have to be registered with the Oh, so it's actually even more difficult and, than and, just and, getting people on the and street to the New York State mm-hmm. Libertarian Brass. It's all so new because we weren't enrolled libertarians until 2018. Mm-hmm. Uh, really. Uh, Who else is running in New York as a libertarian that you know? Nobody else is running in New York. Nobody else? Nobody else. Because I remember uh, Dev- Devin Bal- Balkland. Balkland. Devin Balkland, I'll Balkan tell you this. Ran for public advocate. He's a really smart kid. Yeah, he is. And he got a bunch of votes. Yeah, um, 50. So. I, 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 I'll put it out there. At the beginning, I was like, dude, you got to, you, you, you. The, I, I stepped aside and let you have the nomination, man. Yeah. You, you got to go campaign. Did like, you campaign? Like, dude, there's facial recognition all over the place, dude. This did is he, easy. But he did campaign, did, didn't he? He wasn't as aggressive as I thought. So I was like, I, I was mum on him. Mm. But then in the last couple of weeks, he made a couple appointments with... A couple like good media figures, and man, did he rock! And he impressed me on every single one of those interviews. And for somebody who didn't really run that aggressive of a campaign, you know, he campaigned well when he did. I'm not saying that. Mm-hmm. And to get 15,000 votes in an off election year, 15,000 was in the, and how, yeah. how many did Jermaine get? Oh, hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. However, though, 15,000 is like the Barclays Center full of people watching a Nets game. That means a lot of people were paying attention. And not only that, 50,000 thought of voting for him, and 35,000 of them did it, and 15,000 did. And I didn't actually, I mean, uh, I shouldn't admit this, but I didn't, I didn't actually vote. I didn't, I didn't show up to vote. Well, so, I mean, there but was... But he, he would have had my vote. Yeah, exactly. And there was a couple ballot measures. Uh, there was really nothing to vote on this year. And for him to get 15,000... I mean, I was at the protest about the lady with... What do you call this food? What do you call the bread with the sugar? Chur- churros. Ch- churros. Yeah. Uh, I, I was there, and basically it was like a libertarian festival. Yeah. You know, of progressive Democrats. Well, I mean, whenever I've gone to a libertarian meeting, it's been very small. You know, there have been less than 30 people. I think the biggest one I went to was in Brooklyn, 
And they were like, you know, it was in a restaurant, right? Where they had beer and pizza, and there was like, you know, 20 people. And the, the discussions, I, I thought, I mean, I, I'll tell you why, why I wasn't that interested, and why I haven't been going back that much. They're not talking about what we're talking about now, right? They're not talking about uh, political philosophy. They're not talking about policy. They're, talk, they're not talking about specific issues that, that, that we're dealing with as a country. They're talking about their strategy to how to get more you know, involved in elections, right? And how to, how to strengthen themselves as a party. And it's like, I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not so, so, so it's like, I don't want to, you know, I don't care how, how strong you are as a party exactly, because you haven't demonstrated to me anything that, that, that shows that you have real value. You understand what I mean, right? Like, uh, a couple weeks ago, maybe a couple months ago, I was riding my bike down the West Side Highway, uh-huh. and you were coming up on your skateboard, right. and you were like, Danny, yes. if you told me then, in a couple of months, in November, I'm going to be at your house doing a podcast about me running for president. I would be like, yeah, okay. What does that have to do with what I just said, though? When I'm here and we have Jerry Nadler, mm-hmm. we have Elliot Engel, we have these horrible Congress people, mm-hmm. and I'm telling the Libertarian Party who's struggling to grow, mm-hmm. we need to get a team together to run for Congress and step up against these idiots. And that will bring us media attention, and it'll make us a viable party in this city. Mm-hmm. They are so concerned about holding onto their little chair position. They are so concerned about winning the popularity contest of the twenty people. Mm-hmm. There is no support when somebody wants to do something. To put, there's just no support. Mm-hmm. So when I'm sitting in a vacuum of no support, mm-hmm. what am I going to do? Go well, on for president well, that, that, and make sure people are supported. I mean, I think I think you're also an interesting element within the Libertarian Party because, oh, yeah. because you definitely like aren't afraid to uh, butt heads with them exactly. And you, you you know like like one issue I think um, I I know that that they gave you some real intense flack on was like their 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 policy is just legalization of drugs across the board. I'm right? glad you brought that up. And you're not you're not really down with that exactly. That that's not you don't feel that that's um, that that's the way to go. I don't know if you want to talk about that or not. I would actually like to talk about that. But but the reason why I brought it up is because there were definitely more than a couple of people in the New York Libertarian Party who were like for that reason alone didn't want to um, you know support your campaign for public advocate, right? And, and basically kind of just disagreed with you and and, 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 were, and, and were like, you don't, you don't even know what it well, means to be a libertarian. First of all, they took out of context what I said, mm-hmm. first of all. However, what I will say is in taking that aggressive stance towards me, mm-hmm. like a lot of people are like, oh, you're too aggressive. Mm-hmm. You, you butt heads with people. Well, guess what? They butted heads with me back. And they attacked me so much on what I said about heroin. Mm-hmm. What did you say about heroin? Well, what I said was, they were like, what are we going to do about heroin? And I said, listen, we, we're in New York City right now. And uh-huh. New York City had 1,700 heroin deaths last year alone. And it only had 87 gun deaths. Mm-hmm. Think about what happens when you get caught with a gun. You go to jail for two years. Mm-hmm. I think that's disgusting. I think if somebody is on heroin, uh-huh. what we need to do is we need to get them off heroin as soon as possible. Uh-huh. And I wouldn't mind quarantining them until they kick the habit. Okay. Now, I only said this because even Joe Rogan and Artie Lang's podcast, I met Artie Lang a couple hours before he did the podcast. It was mm-hmm. so cool. But even then, he said, the only time I kicked the habit was when, was when I went to jail. jail. Yeah. Yeah. My ex, we're not going to name her name. It took them putting her in jail and in the hole for four months for her to finally be able to get over that hump where she can focus on rehab and kick that out. Uh-huh. So what I said was, instead of having heroin injection sites, mm-hmm. how about we not criminally charge these people and quarantine them and get them off the habit? And you know what? They butted heads with me and they succeeded. Well, they, they succeeded. They, 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 they succeeded because I changed my position. 
I actually changed my position. You changed your position for the sake of you know placating them on a, on no, a, a political. No. I think the war on drugs altogether has been so completely horrible, atrocious, and failed. Just, just it failed in every sense that it every failed. level. Yeah. That if I was president, uh-huh. I would say, I know there's drugs like heroin that are completely disgusting. Yeah. However, let's legalize drugs for at least one year, and let's see what the hell happens. I, I, you know, it's an interesting question. Like you. You, I gotta get that cat off my clothes because I'm gonna get allergic. Come on, Katie. I know you're comfortable. She's behaving herself more than I anticipated. Yeah. At least she's not attacking the camera. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. No, nothing personal. No, I mean, we're, you know, we're, we're we're not exactly seeing. But this is the thing. I think oh, that I, I think I think that this type of strategy. I don't know if this conversation really reaches the the the, the level of, of what would be necessary. To have a you know successful national presidential campaign, but I think you know it's possible for a presidential candidate with a really lucid message and a really powerful message to do this and to and to reach enough people to actually get elected without investing. Two hundred million dollars into you know all the traditional channels that the that the Democrats and Republicans have 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 used to control the election process for the past you know whatever two centuries yeah. or however long or or not even two centuries I mean the, the Democrats and, and the Republicans um, uh, it hasn't been forever you know we think that 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 this is the way it's always been this is the way it has to be this is the way it's always going to be no. It's like been like 120 years. Whatever it is, things things can change within a generation. Like all it would take is one candidate, you know, to have a really strong social media campaign strategy. And mm. well, here's the problem. Yeah. If that one candidate has a really strong social media presence, mm. and he is against what the social media is doing. To all these people by silencing them and kicking them off and all that stuff, wow. and is really about like free speech. Zuck isn't gonna let it happen. Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And it's I'm not just saying Facebook, you know, live streams are gonna get a candidate elected. No, but 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 you could produce content on your own website. You don't have to go through. The channels that are so expensive I and mean, it costs all this all. Yeah, I'm not going to go there. No, I know, I know that you're not. No, well, that's why I'm interested I in mean, what you're doing. Like, like, oh, uh, look, if somebody wants to give me money, that's great. But I, I'm not going to look to be wasting that money either. I'm going to spend it wisely. However, I'm not going to subscribe to the game of this is what you need, right. this is what you need. And maybe you do. However, I'm not going to let that stop me. No, and I, well, that's what I'm saying. Play a different game. You know, whether you get elected or not, if you do that um, aggressively, and if you do that the right way, it'll set a precedent for the next um, independent candidate, whether it's a libertarian or, you know, I mean, I don't really, are, are, are there, actually, this is a, a good question. Are there any other independent parties or any other parties that you're, Interested in or that you have respect for? The answer for me is no. You know, I, I don't really find like I like the libertarians, right? Like uh, the I, uh, I mean, I am at at home in the libertarian party. Uh, you know, um, the Green Party. I mean, uh, I think Jesse the Body Ventura is cool. Mm-hmm. I thought Jill Stein was cool. Uh, every time she came on TV, I tuned in, I listened to her. I haven't been to any of the, the Green Party meetings. But, yeah, and you've been to a few of those, right? Yeah. Uh, they get more people than the They the definitely get more right? people. They yeah. definitely get more people. Because they have messaging. They talk about the environment. Libertarians have no environmental policy well, they whatsoever. Have no, they have no policy whatsoever. That, 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 this is what we were talking about uh, earlier, than what I said to you. Like, like the... The... Um, the um, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm having a mental blank spot. The party that we just mentioned, the Green, Green Party. The Green Party is actually about doing something tangible that everybody understands and everybody knows is a good thing, right? The libertarian... I, I don't know about that. But yeah, protecting the environment isn't a good thing? 
they're, I mean, they are full on socialists. Okay, right, right. We don't want to create like a carbon tax. We talked about that. Yeah. Like they're, the way they're going yeah, about it is not guys. sure. And I agree with you 100%. I don't think, well, I'm, I'm, I'm certainly not part of that party. But what I'm saying is they have a very clear issue and they're doing a lot of things around that issue that's drawing attention to themselves, that's making people think, oh, I, I would vote for that candidate, right? If the libertarians were doing things like that or, or defining issues in that way, I think it would um, do very good things for them, you know, as, as a party. So, I mean, listen, I went to a debate, I was at a debate this weekend, um, and, you know, there was a couple guys with a little bit of experience, so, you know, when when I came on to my first presidential debate, I, I don't get nervous in front of I don't get stage This was a presidential debate. Yeah, yeah this and was these were other libertarians. Yeah, candidates running for yeah. president. I don't get nervous in front of, you put me in front of, like, uh, the Martin Luther King crowds, mm-hmm. and I wouldn't get nervous. But my first presidential debate, it's overwhelming because there's so much stuff to talk about. And then there was a couple other more pe- people that had a, a couple more debates under their belt, and they seemed a little more, you know, oh, he's really even killed, okay? However, I was the only candidate to address any policy issues. What were they talking about? If not Taxation stuff. Taxation stuff. When I become president, I'm going to eradicate the government. Taxation is theft, and whoever can say that the smoothest they think is going to win. And I'm like, listen, we need to sell libertarianism. You libertarians are always about the free market. Well, there's a free market in politics. In order to win politics, we need to win urban communities. And if we don't win, ur- we, if we tell them taxation is theft, we're not going to win urban communities. We have to indict what the welfare state is doing and paint the picture of how the money is going straight to the elite and never goes to that. And but and we have to, if the libertarians are going to, we, we have to not create the impression that the libertarians are the ones to fix that issue. The libertarians need to step up and start actually fixing those issues, right? Actually doing things to fix those issues, not through, um, you know, campaigning for political office, not by trying to, you know, strengthen the political message in this abstract manner, but like, what are actual tangible things that we can do as libertarians that are going to uh, affect society in a manner consistent with our with our political uh, philosophy and worldview? You have, uh, uh, I, I, you're, you're bringing Do you up, agree with what I'm saying? You're bringing up a really good point. And in Greenpoint, there's a North Brooklyn Democrat Club, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, you can go in there too. I can go both sides. <laughs> well, they're really interesting. These clubs. Yeah. They're really interesting because I'm sitting around the table and they're talking uh, a year ago mm. about you know we need to put together a business plan and present it to this local legislature on what we're going to do about sanitation. That's what I'm talking. About. And what they're doing about yeah. sanitation now uh-huh. is that you know how private sanitation works in New York City. I. If you're a commercial, no, I, I could probably guess. If you're a commercial bit, establishment, the garbage man doesn't come. You have to hire your own sanitation guy, or you put a dumpster in the back, and they come and get it. Well, I know. Yeah, I know. If you're doing like a big, like if I was moving out of this apartment or whatever, and you wanted to clean out the, yeah, then I know you have to bring a dumpster outside, and you pay for the dumpster. Right? Yeah. You can't just dump it. So that's not the garbage man. That's like the private sanitation. Yeah. Right. So these private sanitation companies, yeah, they've been linked to the mob, this and that, all that stuff, have been around forever. Okay. So a private sanitation company could have an account like Chase Bank, uh-huh. and he could have been nurturing that account for the last 20 years. Uh-huh. Now the city decided to put forth a law that says we're going to break it up into 20 precincts, and you have to buy a license to do sanitation in one of those precincts, and that's it. And it was at this North Brooklyn Democrats meeting that they were addressing that, that issue. Brainstorm this issue um, came up. I, this, it's an abysmal issue. It's it's an, it's an outrage to America. That this well, what did they What did they do? How did they? They influence? came up with their business plan, uh-huh. and they went to two different local city council guys, uh-huh. and they said, "Listen, we need a meeting." They talked to their scheduler. They sat down with the scheduler, uh-huh. and they presented it to them. And Antonio Rosa Reynoso, one of the councilmen, bid on it and said, yeah, let's do it, let's go. 
went down to City Hall and got it done. You know, but that, this is interesting. That's what I'm talking about, right? Like, so if we went to these libertarian meetings and said, okay, these are like 10 issues like that, like what you just described, that are happening in, happening in the city. These are the let you know. These are the councilmen and the and the and the um, you know the house and what what these are the decision makers we need to approach to talk about it and get things done. That would be something that I would be more inclined to participate in and get involved with, right? But there isn't any of that. I haven't seen. I didn't. Well, it's not like I've been going to a lot of libertarian meetings, but from my discussions with you, the few meetings that I've gone to. There wasn't any of that, right? No, everyone's so scared that their chair position is getting taken away. Mm -hmm. They go to these libertarian meetings. It's divide and conquer. You're not libertarian enough. You're not the 